فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم These book what do they do for you or even the kitab الدرر البهية uh, by الإمام uh, محمد بن علي الشوكاني رحمه الله تعالى These books what are they known as they are known as المتون الفقهية المتون الفقهية what they do for you is this book has in it مسائل فرعية the things that nullify the salah the things that nullify your wudu شروط الصلاة and they'll say in one two three so it's farah one 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 you know one two three so you memorize it one okay this is the condition of the prayer one هيا these are the second condition okay هيا the third condition the fourth condition the fifth condition you memorize it these are the pillars these are the wajibat these are the muqtilat the things that nullify your prayer these are masail far'iyah that's the first way a person has to have that with him so he has istihdar he knows the masail far'iyah he knows them they're with him this is the most common way that many people take the second method after doing that the person does the second it's not necessarily in the order that I'm mentioning, but these are the ways to have malaka fiqiyah. There can be taqdeem or ta'khir, it doesn't matter. The second one is, the, the, the person studies fiqh through what? Al-ahadith al mutaalliqat bil ahkam The person studies it through the ahadith that are dealing with fiqh. Such as the person studies bulug al-maram fi umdati al-ahkam, bulug al-maram fi adilati al-ahkam. Or the Kitab al umdat al-Ahkam, al Bulugh al-Maram by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Umdat al-Ahkam, which is Abdul Ghani, Abdul Wahid al-Maqdisi, al-Muntaqa, which is Abdul Barakat, Majdin Abdul Barakat, Taymiyyah, Ibn Taymiyyah's granddad. Are you with me? Or the Kitab al-Muharrar, Ibn Abdul Hadi. These books are hadith books. But they are what? Hadith that are general, like Riyadh al-Salihin, or uh, are they books like that? No, they're not. These ahadiths are particularly in fiqh. They are hadiths which are connected to ahkam, hukum, shar'i. صح? In other words, they deal with fiqh issues. So the person learns it, also the ahadiths, and they memorize it. They memorize it. The third one is, the person does, is, which is the third path and the third method, is, القاعدة الأصولية القواعد الأصولية and we already took what القاعدة الأصولية means books like these are the كتاب مفتاح الأصول by زن by زن زنجاني مفتاح الأصول which is written by زنجاني which is تخريج الفروع على الأصول the person will learn قاعدة أصولية and he will solidify himself like that. And the fourth one is قواعد فقهية Books that are قواعد فقهية Such as this particular book that we're studying which is الفرائد البهية في نظم قواعد الفقهية When a person does those four then he has ملكة فقهية ملكة Strong Rooted with those four, the person gains malaka fiqhiyya. So that is very important that I, that benefit is shared with the students and that a person knows this. This kitab that we have in front of us, Al-Fara'id al bahiya Fi Nadmi Qawa'id al fiqhiyya written by the author Al Abu Bakr ibn Abil Qasim Al-Ahdal, is it's a nadm, it's a poetry. And when I last looked at it, it is 525 lines. It is 525 lines. And it is, yep, yeah, 525 lines. And it's a poetry from the book Al Ashbah wa Nadair by Suyuti. Jalaluddin al Suyuti, rahimahullah, he wrote a book called Al Ashbah wa Nadair. So, what Abu Bakr ibn Abil Qasim al Ahdal did was. 
he made that book, Al Shibah al Nadair of Suyuti, which is not a poetry, he made it into a poetry so the people can memorize it. So I'm going to first of all, first of all speak about the Kitab Al Shibah al Nadair by Suyuti. So we have an understanding of the original book, that this book that we're studying made it into a poetry. So we have an understanding of what? Al Shibah al Nadair, that we know it. Then, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to be speaking about Al-Faraid al-Bahiyya. Al-Imam al-Suyuti, rahimahullah, my beloved brothers and sisters, his works and his books that he wrote, with all honesty, are min ajwad al-musannafat, from the most greatest books that are out there. Rahimahullah ta'ala, overall. His books are amazing. And when I say overall, is because in details, he was an Ash'ari, and he was a, a Sufi. So these things crept into some of his works, and you read in his works khurafat and issues which were, which were wrong and incorrect. As for from the angle of fil jumla in, in totality and in conclusion, his books are praiseworthy and they are beneficial. And it's rare, it's actually rare that you find a field except Suyuti rahimahullah has written a book on it. We have this book Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyya, uh, Al Al this book that we have, uh, this field, sorry, Qawaid Al-Fiqiyya right now. We have him write this book, al shibah al he wrote this book. He wrote a book in Kitab Al-Qawaid al Al-Fiqiyya, he's written a book called al shibah al Nadair, which is the one we're talking about. And according to the Shafi'iyyah, they classified his book, al shibah al Nadair, as what? Ajwadu Kitab in the greatest book, Sunni fi Ilm al Qawaid, that was written in Ilm al Qawaid. They consider it the best book for them that was written in Ilm al Qawaid. Are you with me, brothers? So, why would they say it's the best book written when they, we spoke about the other day, Al Izm al Abdi Salam, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, his book, Al Qawaid al Ahkam fi Musalih al Anaman? Yeah. And we also have books like uh, Al Majmu' al Muhaddab uh, fi Qawaid al Madhab by Al Alai al Kaykaldi, Rahimahullah. Al Imam al Al Alai al Kaykaldi. And other Shafi'iyya who written books in the Madhab. The reason why is because, brothers, and you should always try to memorize this qa'idah. And this qa'idah is not qa'idah mutarida. I mean, it's not always the case. But generally speaking, is the ta'lif, the authoring and the writing of the latecomer. The one who has come late, majority of the times, is that anahu yujidu wa yuharrir. He is going to write perf perfectly better, or he's going to write better. And he's going to observe things more than those who came before him. Are you with me, brothers? Oh, generally speaking. You know why? Because he's seen what they have to say. But they weren't able to see what he has to say. Are you with me? And that, of course, brothers, is that if the person is an alim, la shak. We're not talking about kulla man habba wa dab. Not every person. But that's why we say sometimes, Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani, rahimahullah, Allah gave him that miza. Allah gave him this. Is that he saw what Ahmed ibn Hanbal had to say. He saw what Ali ibn al-Madini had to say. He saw what Yahya ibn Ma'in had to say, and he had the chance and the ability because they probably didn't even see what they said amongst themselves. Does it make sense? Amongst themselves, he, they may not have seen each other's kalam on a matter. Whereas the person who came late may be able to see what both parties have to say. So from this angle is the, the tahrir and the fawaid are like that. But the Suyut his books are like that. Also, he's got, he has a book in, known as Jam'ul Jawami'. And this not, it's not called Jam'ul Jawami' by Suki in uh, Usul al-Fiqh. No. Jam'ul Jawami' in Nahu, grammar. He has a book in grammar called Jam'ul Jawami' Suyuti. You read this book, your mouth will drop. In the way he, huh? The way he wrote it. The way he has written it. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. One of the best books that are written. He also has the Kitab Tadrib al-Rawi. Which is in Mustalah al Hadith. He also is an, even has a book called what? Al Fiyya. A thousand lines of what? It's a thousand lines of. Uh, a thousand lines on uh, Mustalah al Hadith, the science of Hadith. He's Al Fiyya. 
Rahimahullah. You read it, you'll be amazed. He also even wrote, he also even wrote in Balagha, his kitab, uh, his kitab, Uqudul Jumman. His kitab, Uqudul Jumman, which is in what? It is in Ilmul Balagha. So, Mu'allafat, the books of Suyuti, Yambaghi al inayatu biha. It is something that a student of knowledge should not go away from. Khasatan, especially, brothers, his Alfiyat. The books that he's written about Alfiyat, the thousand lines in which he wrote in different fields, don't let those books pass by you. Buy them and have it. This kitab, al ashbah wal Nawair, that we have to be speaking about, it is a kitabun qayyimun wa jayyidun. Wallah, it's a book that's amazing. And it is a very, very, very good book. So now we're going to speak about Kitab al ashbah wal Nadair. How is it organized? How did he write it? And then we're going to go to, inshallah ta'ala, the book that we have in front of us, uh, in front of us which is known as Al-Fara'id al-Bahiyya fi Nadmi Qawa'id al-Fiqiyya. al ashbah wal Nadair is written in what? Seven chapters. He broke it into what? Ila sab'ati kutub. How many chapters, brothers? Seven chapters. He broke it into... He broke it into seven chapters. The first one is, from the seven, and it's important that we understand it, is he speaks about the first chapter, the seven chapters. So if you, go, if you read uh, the Kitab Al-Ashbah wa Nadair, the first chapter is the Qawaid al kulliyat Al-Kubra. The five that we spoke about before. The five qawa'id al kiliyat al-kubra that we had spoken about. Which is what? Al-umuru bi maqasidiha. In this particular order. He does it in this particular order. Which is al-umuru bi maqasidiha. And then he says, al-yaqeenu la yazulu bi shakl. And then the third was al-mashakkatu tajlibu al-taysir. Which is the third. And the fourth one which is al-dararu yuzal. And the fifth one which is al-adah muhakkamah. So he does it in those particular orders. Now these five qawa'id are mutafaqun, agreed upon within the madhab al-shafi'iyya and not only the madhab. Rather, al-qawa'id mutafaqu alayha fil madahib al-arba'a. The four madhabs, they all agree with each other on this. Are you with me? The second chapter, al-imam al-suyuti in his kitab al-shibah wa nadair he talks about, he talks about qawa'id which are قواعد كلية. They are comprehensive principles. يتخرج عليها ما لا ينحصر من الصور الجزئية. The sub-branches that come out of it are excessive in number. But they are not on the level of the five. Are you with me? They are or not on the caliber of the five, which is الأمور بمقاصدها. اليقين لا يزول بالشك. أما لا يزال بالشك. المشقة تجلب التيسير. And Adharu Yuzal and Adam Muhakkama. They're not of that five level. Are you with me, brothers? The second chapter is Qawaid, which are comprehensive, and a lot of sub branches come out, out, of, out of it. And from them is we took one of them of which is Al Ijtihad, La Yanqud Bil Ijtihad. In this one, and he starts with that one. He starts with that one. In the second chapter, the first qa'id in which he starts with, which is, is that al uh, ijtihad la yanqud bil ijtihad. And he mentions 40 qawa'id there. He mentions what? 40 qawa'id. 40 principles. Al Imam al Suyuti rahimahullah. 40 qawa'id. The third chapter is, the third chapter is, the third chapter is, al qawa'id al mutaf al mukhtalifu fiha. Qawaid, which are differed upon, amongst two lacking, يعني بين المذاهب, between the madhabs. The madhabs, they differ upon each other, these, these qawaid. And remember in the muqaddimah, we spoke about the reasons why they would come ikhtilaf in qawaid amongst the madhab. We spoke about that, right? And in more details, and in more explanation, we will do it, inshallah ta'ala, when we go through the kitab, inshallah ta'ala, kitab uh, al-Fara'id al-Bahiyya. In the third chapter, 
which is the qawaid which are differed upon amongst the scholars of the madhabs, the four madhabs, he brings 20 qawaid in here. He brings what? He brings 20 qawaid. Now I want you to all focus with me here, it's very important. The first three chapters, what were they about? What would you say they all have in common? The first three chapters. I know it's, it's a very silly question, but the first three is on Qawa'id al fiqiyah The first three chapters are all Qawa'id al fiqiyah Whereas the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh, there's no Qawa'id al fiqiyah anymore. So what's going to happen here to uh, Ahdal? What's he going to do? He's going to stop. He only done the nadm on only the three first chapters. So the kitab Al-Fara'id al bahiyah since his book is only based on Qawaid, he's only going to bring what? He's only going to bring the first kitab, which is Qawaid al Kulliyat al Kubra, which are the five. And then he's going to bring the 20, uh, the 40 Qawaid, which are Qawaid, Qawaid, Kulliyat, Yatakharraju, Aleha, Malay, and Hasiru, Mina Suwad al Juzia, which is the 40, and also the 20, which is the third one. Which is the Qawaid al Mukhtalifu fiha, the Qawaid which are differed upon between who? Bain al Madahib amongst the Madhabs. Are you with me? So, how many Qawaid are we going to learn in this book? If you calculate them, 5 plus 40 plus 20, that is 65, right? 65 Qawaida. You will know after, after studying this Kitab al Faraid al Bahiyah fi Nadm Qawaid al Fiqiyah. Are you with me, brothers? So, this is what the Kitab al Faraid al Bahiyah. في نظم قواعد الفقية deals with only the three first chapters of كتاب الأشباه والنظائر by Suyuti. Are you with me, brothers? And by the end of this book, inshallah, when we memorize it, 525 lines of poetry, you know from the top of your head, 65 قواعد that are what? And then all of the furu' in the fiqiyat that you're studying and the ahkam that you're taking, you're bringing back to these قواعد. 65 powerful with that this book is something else now so we know now faraid al bahiyah the way it's written right let's carry on the fourth chapter and the fifth chapter and the sixth chapter and the seventh chapter of the kitab al suyuti al ashbah wal nadair the fourth chapter the fourth chapter suyuti he brings um ahkam so it's not it's not qawaid anymore ahkam that come a lot. They come a lot. And you'll find it a lot. Qawaid yakturu dawruha. The role that it plays are very big. And they hold big. And they keep coming back. And the jurist, the faqih, for him to be ignorant of it is something that can't be tolerated. Uh -uh. You can't be ignorant about it. Are you with me? So he speaks about it there. <laughs> the fifth chapter is the issue of nadair. Are you with me, brothers? Nadair. Nadair are what, brothers? In ish nadair al abwab. In other words, simple terms is alati hiya min babin wahidin wa rataba al abwab fiqh. Basically, this one he talks about bawabid fiqhia. He talks about what? Tawabid fiqiyah. And we studied the difference between Tawabid al fiqiyah, Qawaid al fiqiyah, and Qawaid al usuli. We studied that, right? So, what he does is that Al Imam al Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala is that every single chapter he brings the Dabit for that particular chapter and he brings it in chapterings now. Such as, for example, he's going to say when he comes to the chapter of Miyah, Al Asru fil Miyah al Tahara. Now, this is not a Qawaid al fiqiyah, this is called what? Al-Dabid Fiqiyah, Al-Dabid Fiqiyah, because this is specific to a particular chapter. It is specific to a particular chapter. It is specific to a particular chapter. Whereas Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah is not specific to a particular chapter. That is the difference between the two. The sixth chapter, Suyuti speaks about what? Furuq, differences. Issues. There are what? 
iftaraqat they have differed in the chapterings in other words the subject that is known as al furuq the subject that is known I mean, the issue that's known as al furuq differences things that you see but you don't know there are differences in it so the seventh one is what things that look the same fi nadair shatta things that look the same but they're not particular chapters so this is where the difference of the seventh chapter and the fifth chapter they differ on the fifth chapter is specific it's a specific nadair to a particular bab whereas the seventh one is shatta different in um this book that we have with us right now, which is Al-Fara'id al Bahiya, we, we realize now that he deals with what, brothers? What, what, what does Al-Fara'id al Bahiya, what did he do Nadam on? He done it on the first? First three chapters. He done it on the first three chapters. And um, <coughs> he did not bring the other remaining. So he done more of a summary so, for the person uh, than he had done, uh, what is it, um, than actually writing the whole nadam of Kitab al Shabai wal So it's important that the student of knowledge is aware of that. Because sometimes what happens is the student of knowledge may think to himself that the Kitab al Fara'id al Bahiyya fi Nadm Qawa'id al Fiqiyya is a nadam of Suyut al Shabai wal all of it, when, it, when it's not. Because Suyut is about Ashbai wa Nadair is not all Qawa'id al Fiqiyya. You with me? He goes off on other issues as well. But all of the chapters that are Qawa'id al Fiqiyya, which is the first, second, and third, Ahdal, Abu Bakr ibn Abil Qasim al Ahdal, he done nothing of it. So how much does he, did he make it into? 520? 25. Some copies they make it into 526. So I've seen it like that. Who told him to write this book? Why did he write it for? The reason why he wrote it, in, we're going to see it later, inshallah ta'ala, he mentions it in the book, is that his teacher commanded him, Ahmad al-Nashiri. His teacher, who taught him, told him to write and to do nothing of this book. And so he did it. And he made it into a poetry. And it's going to come to us later, inshallah ta'ala, in the nadm, in the poetry. He mentions it. <coughs> this book has different shuruh, different sh explanations on it. There are different explanations on it. I have two shuruh of them. This one being Al Mawahib As Saniyah. This book being Al Mawahib As Saniyah, which is written by Allama Abdullah ibn Sulaiman Al Jahrazi. Al Jarhazi, sorry. Al-Shafi, Abdullah ibn Sulaiman, Al-Jarhazi, Al-Shafi. I also saw that some scholars, they did the dubbed of his name as Al-Jurhazi. I've seen that. Both ways I saw people read it. Um, this book, Al-Muwahib al Saniya Fi Sharh Nadhum Qawaid Al-Faqiyya, is one of the shuruhs, which are, mashallah, very good, very simplistic, very nice um, and he does a very good explanation inshallah ta'ala we will quote it we will reference it and we will be in uh, be using it inshallah ta'ala uh, and be extracting things from it um, the one I have does not have the hashia of because some of the copies I tried to look for it the hashia the footnotes and the, of al-fadani some of the copies of the Mawahib, it has the Hashia of Al Fadani. Also, from the Shuruh that are on this book, that explain this book, is Al Mawahib Al Aliyah, Sharh Al Fara'id Al Bahiyah, by Yusuf ibn Muhammad Al Battah. Al Battah, who died the year Sarat Alfin wa Mi'ataini wa Sitta wa Arba'in. So he died the year uh, 1246. Kitab al Muwahib al Aliyah, Sharh al Fara'id al Bahiyya. Inshallah ta'ala, one of the shuruh that I'm going to be using, bi idni lahil kareem, and I believe students of knowledge should try to buy that and have that copy, which is Ilahu al Qawa'id al Fiqiyya, Litullab al Madrasati al Sawlatiyya. 
ايضاح القواعد الفقهيه لطلاب المدرسه الصولتيه This book is a nathar It's a nathar of the nazm What does that mean? He, the book that we have right now is a poetry version, right? What he did was he took it back from it being poetry and he made it into a normal book. So sometimes what happens is poetry makes hard for you to understand things because the author is not only writing about the science but he's also trying to follow a, a, a rhythm and a, 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 a pattern in his poetry. So sometimes you may not understand what he's trying to say about it. So when you have the, the nathar of the book, with the nath, you will always get ease out of it. When we, when we were studying Al-Fit Ibn Malik, when we studied Al-Fit Ibn Malik, sometimes the ibarat of Ibn Malik, rahimahullah, are you with me? Might be a bit hard for you to understand. So what were we, what were we studying it with? We were studying with the kitab of Ibn Hisham al-Ansari, which is Awdahu al-Masalik. Ibn Hisham al-Ansari, what he did to Al-Fit Ibn Malik is he made it to a nathar. He made it away, a nathar. He just took it out from it being a poetry, so you can actually just read it normally. So any points that Ibn Malik had said and you don't understand what he meant by it, it's always easy to go to the kitab or the Masalik that's written by, written by Ibn Hisham al-Ansari. So books like that always are good, and it's not those books are good in the sense where they are nice to understand uh, the nazm. That sometimes becomes hard for you to, to, to understand. Um, there's another book Shafi'i I have, and I want to speak about that, and I'm going to end it for then if, if, at that point, and we can go to the book, inshallah, straight away. Which is, there's already Al Shibah al Nadai written by Subki, which is a Shafi'i himself. And now you guys are here studying Kitab al Fara'id al Bahi fi Nadm Qawaid al Fiqiyah, which is the Nadm of a Suyuti's Ashbah al Nadai, and not Subki's one, because you don't. We're not studying Subki's one. We're studying which one? Suyuti's one. But you said Suyuti's one is better than Subki's one. The reason is one that I already mentioned. Suyuti came after Subki. Suyuti came after Subki. And as I said before, that the work of a latecomer, Fil Ghalib, generally speaking, it's not Qaida Muttari, it's not always the case. Annahu yujidu wa yuharrir. He's going to do a better job than who, those who came before him. The second reason why Subki's kitab is not as good as Suyuti is because Subki's kitab, al ashbahi wal nadair since Subki is a person who was very deep in usul al-fiqh, and he was an usuli, bima'an al-kalima, Subki. Are you with me? Are you with me, brothers? And Usul, Qawaid al Usuliya comes before what, brothers? It comes before Qawaid al Fiqir, right? Are you with me, brothers? Trying to explain a book with the. Because remember, whatever science that you've studied or you like the most is always going to impact your explanation of a book. It's always going to have a. It's going to have an impact, it's going to have a say, it's going to, it can be seen from you that this is your field, because that's going to have it. Since Subki was an Usuli, his writing in Qawaid al fiqhiyya is more like a Qawaid Usuliya. He's using the Usuli way of it. When in reality, Qawaid al fiqhiyya is what? It is what comes after Qawaid al Usuliya. Sah? Then the Qawaid al we said, is taken directly from the Hukum Shar'i, right? When we were speaking in the Muqaddimah. Whereas, whereas Suyuti's Kitab, his Nafas is not Nafas Usuli. Suyuti's Nafas, his strong point his, is not Nafas Usuli. His Nafas is Nafas Fiqhi. So, Ashbah al Nadair of Suyuti is more Fiqhi related. Qawaid Fiqhiya. So, it goes more easy and it flows easier. And it is easy for a student of knowledge to understand. Are you with me, brothers? This is just a mulahaba of the whole issue at hand. Inshallah ta'ala, without any further ado, we're now going to start with the Kitab. Uh,